Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be doing another What is Wednesday. And in this What is Wednesday, we're going to be talking about CSS in JS. And uh, what is CSS and JS? And we're also going to be talking about what is styled components because that's a library I personally love to use for CSS in uh, JS. Okay. So first off, what is CSS and JS? And this one is really easy because it has what it is directly in the name. I mean, it's basically describing it. And the uh, the basic way to understand this is instead of writing your CSS in SAS or CSS or or stylus or any of these other uh, CSS languages, right? You are writing your CSS in your JavaScript files. And uh, that right there is enough to make some people very angry. I don't know why. For some reason, this topic attracts a lot of strong, strong, strong opinion. So I'm going to ask that you keep an open mind for the remainder of this next video uh, so that I can talk to you a little bit about CSS and JS, why it matters, why it's cool, why it's not cool, and uh, just a little bit about styled components as well. So to kick things off, I think I'm going to do a, what are the pros of CSS in JavaScript? Why the heck would you want to ever write your CSS in JavaScript? I mean, after all, we have CSS, we have post processors, we have all these great things, post CSS or any of that stuff, right? Why the heck would you want to take those skills out of CSS and move to JavaScript? Well, there's a lot of great features, and a lot of them have to do with sort of little things that add up into big things. Uh, and a lot of these things might not even be features that you feel like you need until you try them and all of a sudden realize how nice they are. For instance, one of the main features about CSS and JavaScript is the interactivity with JavaScript. Now, it's not like you can't interact with your CSS and JavaScript without uh, CSS and, J and JS, but... Most of these libraries make ways of working in that very, very easy instead of just overriding some CSS properties that are set somewhere else based on a class. This is actually typically affecting properties that come into things like a styled component and update the component CSS in real time. It can be really, really, really super easy. And the first time you ever have to have something that JavaScript affects your CSS, you're going to immediately see the benefit for just how nice it is. Now, I get that you can do all sorts of CSS. CSS manipulation with JavaScript, and we've been doing it that way for a long time. But let me tell you, this is better. Uh, in, in my opinion, this is just flat out better. It's a lot easier. Uh, it's, it's much more explicit because you're modifying or updating properties right there instead of overriding something that's uh, written in another file or perhaps uh, overriding something that is uh, just in a totally another scoped CSS. Okay, so it makes working with JavaScript very easy. And that even opens the door to something like element queries, right, where you're actually manipulating the CSS based on the width of the element rather than the width of the viewport. Like myself and others have talked quite a bit about element queries in the past, saying that I believe strongly that they are uh, something that we're going to be using all the time in the near future. So uh, maybe element queries deserve their own What is Wednesday video. But it certainly makes working with things like element queries really super nice and easy. Uh, next, it just allows you to work in JavaScript easily. If we check out some of my code here, and it's not really anything crazy going on, but I, I wrote a tint function, okay? And you might be thinking, hey, there's tint functions in SAS or Stylus or whatever. And, and you're right, there are. But we can actually write our own functions in JavaScript with JavaScript code and use them directly in our CSS, allowing us to have total flexibility as terms of what the framework is actually offering versus what you can write yourself. And therefore, it opens up a huge possibility for writing functions and JavaScript stuff that are going to modify your code. Now, you can do a lot of this stuff in SAS or Stylus, sure. But this is much greater because you have all of JavaScript to handle this stuff. And you can use all of your JavaScript skills to do that. Uh, another thing that people really like is how scoped it is. Now, again, uh, this is the, the argument to this point is that, well, if you're good enough at CSS, the scoping shouldn't matter because you should be able to have a system like BEM or something like that uh, to handle the cascade or handle different scoping things. But anyone who's written CSS knows it's frustrating when you write something and it modifies something you didn't expect it to. Uh, so get good at CSS is obviously a response to this. But let me tell you, by having the scoped uh, language stuff as on by default, like it is with CSS and JS, as in when you write your CSS and JavaScript, it's scoped to whatever you're using it for, it makes keeping track of that way easier because it's scoped by default. 
And if you want to embrace the cascade and do all of that stuff within CSS, those skills and abilities are still open to you with CSS and JS. It's not like someone's removing those things and getting good at CSS is not necessarily a great argument against this. I, I think uh, this system, even if, you know, people who are very talented at CSS uh, enjoy this enjoy writing CSS code, uh, I still think this system is easier to write scoped CSS. Now, I, I say this as someone who's been a serial defender of CSS and someone who loves CSS. CSS has always been one of my favorite things. I've never been the guy who's been saying uh, that CSS is bad or anything like that. I've always been the person defending CSS on Twitter or Reddit or whatever. And let me tell you, I still think this system is better. Okay, so uh, other than that, Okay, we have these two scope things. You can work with JavaScript easier. Another thing I really like is in a system like styled components, it can make your code way more readable because instead of working with a layout that's a div with a class name of layout, you're working with a layout component named layout. It makes your code way more readable. It makes your components take up less space. It's less characters. Everything is way more succinct. It's easier to parse, and overall, it just makes more sense when you're looking at it. You can build up your own styled component libraries and have those as an easily onboardable thing for anyone using your application or coding in your code base. I'll talk a little bit about more of that when I talk about styled components specifically. Now, in addition to some of those pros, a lot of this stuff, too, is you can use a lot of your built-in JavaScript tooling for things like dead code elimination, and server-side rendering is now going to render your CSS into your HTML in a style tag along with a unique class. Uh, this way you take care of all of the benefits of things like inline styles without actually having to have inline styles. It's really quite a magnificent system. I really, really, really enjoy this. Okay, so uh, this is what is CSS and JS and why you might use it. Now, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons. I already talked about the pros, so cons time. Uh, we, If you just Google, I did this for fun, why use CSS and JS? It's funny, the very first three things listed, uh, one is positive, one is uh, I swore to use, I swear never to use CSS and JS and here are my six reasons why I was wrong. This one's kind of in between, all you need to know about CSS and JS. And this third one, stop using CSS and JS. And this is a perfect uh, encapsulation of this entire argument here. Everyone has very strong opinions. Now, I can't necessarily recommend this stop using CSS and JS article. I found all of their arguments to not be so good. I'm not picking on this author in particular. Uh, one of their arguments... Um, let me find it here, was that for using styled components makes for more succinct code. I actually made this argument in this video just a minute ago. And uh, this one really bugs me because their example is totally biased and totally skewed. They say, hey, ticket name. Yeah, sure. Ticket name is shorter than styles dot ticket name for the class name. But then they go on for their second example and say a tiny bit longer style name is longer than styles dot longer style name, not longer dot tiny bit longer style name. So they didn't even keep the same naming scheme. And if they would have, the second one would have been longer, totally invalidating their point. Uh, so this one, this argument against this is uh, totally wrong. <laughs> even their example doesn't work here. Uh, but that doesn't mean there aren't valid arguments against CSS and JavaScript, because there's tons of valid arguments against CSS and JavaScript. But personally, the one that I feel like is the biggest, most important red flag about CSS and JavaScript is the lock-in. Now, sure, you have lock-in with SAS or Stylus. You have a reasonable assurance that those platforms aren't going away because they have a big audience. But with CSS and JS, you are locked in to one, JavaScript, okay, that's fine. Two, you're locked into React. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe if I want to move to Vue, maybe there's a library that does something. And then three, you're locked into that third library, which is an even smaller group of people using it called either Styled Components, Styled JSX, or any of these other libraries, right? So if you bet wrong and the other ones become really popular, those libraries go away. You're going to have to do some refactoring down the line to either move to another one or rewrite all your stuff in CSS. So to me, the biggest argument against Styled CSS in, in uh, JS is the lock-in. Now, other arguments include things like the tooling not being good. The tooling's great. I write CSS. It's basically inside of a string here like this, and I get all my auto-completion, all my syntax highlighting. The tooling's absolutely fine. Auto-prefixing is on by default. You don't even have to turn on anything. So I don't really see that necessarily as being super valid either. However, 
setup, configuration, uh, learning the stuff is all brand new, right? If you've already been a huge fan of CSS and you're used to globally styled CSS and stuff like that, you'll have to spend some time learning a new system, how to do things, what are the best practices. You'll spend a little bit of time on growing pains and stuff like that. And certainly those are valid arguments, right? You're going to have to spend time to learn this stuff. And uh, I mean, there's plenty of other, you know, criticisms uh, as well, but I really think the biggest one you have to think about is the lock-in. Do you want to be locked into this platform? Now, for me, the lock-in was not a big enough deal, and I decided to go ahead and use styled components specifically. So let's talk a little bit about what are styled components right now. So styled components, uh, like their name suggests, are components that you write with this library called styled components. And typically writing a React component, you could do so as a stateless functional component. It's just a function of putting some like JSX code, or you could do it without JSX, or you could do it in components. There's a whole bunch of ways you can make a React component. What's fun about styled components is that these are really basic, easy to make components. You can see from this example, we just have a constant button is equal to styled dot and then the element name. We have some back ticks and then you write your CSS as if it was CSS. I mean, this is copy and paste CSS, nothing fancy here. Some of the other CSS and JS libraries have this be an object inside of a, instead of a string. And then therefore you end up having to do things like camel casing your property values and wrapping your values and strings. I like this way better because it feels like CSS. It, it's the least resistance for me coming from CSS, right? Now, in addition to this kind of stuff, uh, you, now, you now have these components that you can reuse like normal React components. I, I use this stuff all over my site. For instance, follow me, I have a BTN, which is a button styled link, right? It'd be a an href with a class of button or something like that if this was normal CSS. But it's basically a button anchor. And I am able to pass in any sort of property and that gets passed right through into the anchor tag. So my href here gets passed right through into the anchor tag. Also, I have things like a sheet card and a card heading. And these things are components that I can use anywhere. One of the things I really liked about my system here is that I basically threw all of my elements into their own files, and then I have an index file that imports them all. So that way I can import any of these things just as import sheet card and header from UI elements. This makes using this stuff really easy and onboarding could be as simple as somebody having a list of all of the different components in your site. Instead of having to memorize class names and variations and modifiers, you're all of a sudden saying, hey, here are the different components that you're using or are available to you. This is what they look like. They're super easy. Just drop them in here like this, right? Uh, so I found the organizational and structural things about styled components to be one of their biggest strengths. Ranks. Again, uh, I really like this library. There's a lot of people using it and there's a lot of additional library tools. So I, I might consider to do a mini series on styled components and all of the excellent, excellent features in here that I'm uh, glossing over right now. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. Okay, so this is what is CSS and JS. I hope I gave you a, a good, totally non-biased. I mean, I am using styled components, but I am a big fan of CSS. It did seem like I spent a lot more time on the pros. I'm not unaware of that, but uh, honestly, I, I don't necessarily buy a ton of the arguments against it other than, hey, I don't want to write my CSS in JavaScript. That's a totally valid argument. Yeah, I get it, right? Uh, and, and I myself was that same way. All I request is that you keep an open mind. And if you're working in this stuff, give it a try. You can hate it after you try it, but don't declare that you hate it before you've even tried it because then you won't ever learn anything, okay? So I wanna hear your thoughts about this stuff. I wanna hear your tools, tips, techniques on styled components. I wanna hear your favorite libraries of CSS and JS. I wanna hear why you do or don't use CSS and JS. I wanna hear your pros and cons, but but with the caveat is, I want real points made here. I want I want actual, this is why I use it, not I don't use it because they're dumb. If you leave a comment like that, I'm going to delete it because that's not an argument. That's not helping the conversation here. What I wanna do is have a real conversation about the pros and cons of styled components and CSS and JavaScript overall as a whole based on any library that you're using. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you wanna help support the channel, head on over to leveluptutorials.com where you can subscribe to become a Level Up Pro, get access to all of the Pro Series. There's a new one every single month. This month's Pro Series is 
Headless WordPress. Uh, that's not the name of the series, but it's going to be on Headless WordPress. We're going to be doing some Gatsby, some Next.js. We're going to be working with the WordPress API and building some really cool stuff. Uh, you can see the pro courses from last month was Vue.js for everyone. The month before that, Pro Gatsby. Before that, Level 2 React Native with GraphQL. We have Redux and React for everyone. Modern CSS layouts, which uses CSS and Flexbox to do uh, grid stuff. We'll do a lot of modern CSS grid work. I love CSS grid. Uh, React 16 for everyone and all sorts of good stuff. So if you like this video and want to continue to support this channel, head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store and purchase a series or become a level up pro. I'm also going to be continuing my free JavaScript testing series is coming uh, very, very soon later this week. More and more videos for that as well. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.